remodeling safe too. Okay. I'm gonna talk about portal framing. Patios and Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith, along with Morgan. Hello, everybody. And we're glad to be with you. And we are taking your calls today at 737-1200 or 1-800-383-WOAI. Again, that local number is 737-1200. And we are also live on Facebook and Instagram, so you can send us a message or a question there, and we can give you an answer on air or during the breaks. Yep, and so we'd love to take your calls or questions or your Insta messages, <laughs> right? What yeah. do they call them, IM? DMs, direct DM, messages. DMs, direct messages, there you go. I showed my age there. Oh yeah. DMs, that's it, not IMs. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna talk, talk, start off with our remodeling safe tip of the week. Go ahead, Morgan. Well. Our one safe tip, to me is a big safe tip, is that we try to keep as up to date as we can with the photos of our employees on our website. So that way you can know exactly who's coming into your house, you know what they're going to look like. And you know, think about too, like your neighbors, they can also keep track and, you know, and it helps for break-ins. Remodeling can be a... Um, Risky business. Yes, and it could potentially be a red flag for burglars to come, so then you know exactly who's gonna be on your project. Uh, that's a good point, I hadn't thought of that. So if you know who's supposed to be there, then when other people are trying to take advantage of the situation, mm -hmm. you know who's that's what not you're saying. gonna be there. You know that they're not part of that mm -hmm. group because they could try to infiltrate. Yes. Now, I don't think we've ever had that happen, but we have had people show up that we didn't know who they were and we alerted the, the homeowner to it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, many times it was people that were not part of the immediate household. Oh, yeah. And we didn't know. Mm -hmm. But that's a good point. So that is a nice, safe tip. Uh, and it makes people feel good to be able to look on there and see that we're not ashamed or, you know, we're not, we're going to go ahead and advertise who's going to be on your project. Yeah. Because we know they have a good background. We know that they are tried, tested, and proven. And so I like our website, the way it has all those Friendly. All our team members. Yeah, friendly faces. And you can kind of get a little glimpse of their personality just from those photos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll move up to having videos of them pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they'll like that. <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking about some things that we, um, that we did during the week that I ran into. Uh, I like to talk about situations that people may not be aware of. In remodeling. In remodeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good place to go. Since I look at, I, I visit so many people each week and so many different types of projects, I like to talk about, you know, projects or questions that I'm getting in the field or things that people may not be aware of that they should be aware of. And while we're, you know, doing this, of course, you can call us at 737-1200 if you have any questions that you'd like to ask about your future project. But the one I'm thinking about now has to do with cabanas. Cabanas, as they're properly called, but we call them cabanas. And the freestanding, you might call them a pavilion, patio covers, a lot of different names. But we tend to think of the, the cabanas as being a uh, freestanding. Like gazebos? Gazebos are another type, yeah. So whether you're talking gazebo, square, rectangular, mm -hmm. or octagonal, hexagonal, any of those, they all they all are freestanding and that's mm -hmm. really what i'm referring to mm -hmm. is freestanding buildings have their own own requirements and one of the biggest things that you that um, i would say at risks to outside freestanding buildings is what what would you think because i didn't tell you what i was going to talk about wind wind that's right you're exactly right especially when you start putting heavy roof loads on them a lot of people don't realize how heavy a roof is. And you may think, yeah, but it's being supported, isn't it? Yes, it is. Only when it's in a vertical position, completely vertical. 
if if a building starts to move or lean it's not designed to carry that weight in a leaning fashion that means that means that that weight starts having a different effect on on the structure so the goal is is in all situations is to keep that building standing straight up and not leaning at all and a lot of people don't realize that if you give it a little push the weight starts working against the building that's bad you know something heavy that's like if you're trying to balance something like maybe you're uh, you're holding up a ladder somebody says hold this ladder and it's real tall mm -hmm. if it's perfectly straight it's not hard to hold up but as soon as it starts to lean if it's sticking up in the air 20 feet how hard is it to hold in if it starts to lean hard very hard <laughs> yeah and the amount of weight that it starts exerting every inch that it's out of level it becomes greater and greater load to try to hold it up and it only takes a few inches for that load to be too hard for for most people to even hold up and that's just a ladder an aluminum ladder for example but you you can do that on a roof the top of the roof might be 16 feet in the air mm -hmm. or at least 12 to 14 feet in the air it's way up there and so it the higher something is the higher that a uh, weight is the more force it has the more leverage it has against what's what's trying to hold it up so when you start adding more and more weight above your head start getting above eight feet nine feet ten feet and even further that weight which down on the ground wouldn't be in a, a hard to handle load now it starts to become a very difficult load to handle when it starts to lean so you do not want to get that building leaning. It has thousands and thousands of pounds, not the, not the weight of a ladder, like maybe 100 or 200 pounds, but this is, we're talking thousands of pounds. And once it starts to lean, it starts to do a lot of damage. So there's two things that wind causes, and we're gonna talk about both of them, how to prevent it. One is uplift. You feel like a tornado? Well, when just high winds. Can whip can whip around things. Um, I mean, if you see a piece of paper laying on a table and the wind picks it, uh, mm -hmm. moves it. Does it move it straight down or does it lift it up? Lift typically, it up. yeah, it'll lift it up and then eventually it'll come down, right? Mm -hmm. So winds have currents that tend to uplift, and we're going to talk about what to do about that. And then we're also going to talk about what the winds can do just by pushing, just straight pushing, and how to how to avoid that. So these are some of the things we're going to talk about today. And again, we're going to take your calls after the break at 737-1200 or 1-800-383-WOAI. I want to mention that local number again, 737-1200. We love talking to y'all. And I love talking about Ford and Bernie. I just just detailed my, my truck for the first time. That King Ranch leather smells, took two days. smells awesome. So it took yesterday evening and this morning because I had not done it before. And I mean, I just absolutely love this truck. It wow. is, you know, it's it's just everything I wanted and pulling and, and uh, gas mileage is good. It's the strength, I mean, the fact that I know I can't overuse it. Too. Yeah, this is a very roomy. You know what I did that shows me how great my truck is? And by the way, it's from Ford to Bernie. You should go there if you're gonna, if you're gonna get a truck. They're at 210-920-3023. Or just go to FordandBernie.com. Anyway, I was, it was, you know it was raining, so I put yeah. a canopy over it, and I was taking care of the heat yesterday, but today it worked, so I could, I could get in and I could uh, no, blow down the windows. I couldn't really get in or out, because the rain would get on the doors if I opened it up. Oh. But my truck is so big, I was able to climb over the seats and get in the front, and, and I thought, man, this <laughs> truck, Texas I mean, limo. the ceiling is so high, I can climb over those big seats. And, oh my goodness. And get into the front man. and keep detailing it. Yeah, I mean that's not the that's not a small truck. <laughs> anyway, we'll be right back after the KM Builders um, to the to the KM Builders remodeling and design show. They had snuck in in the night and committed these murders. Nobody had a. There were murders. I know. Nobody had a clue. Uh, I hate it when they don't have a clue about them murders. At our. Mary Ford meeting yesterday, they, uh, one of the remodelers got called out to a job that the city had turned off the power to her house because of um, 
not passing the inspection and it wasn't she couldn't get it they kept coming out and it like it wasn't getting fixed she couldn't get it fixed so the city said this house is not livable because it was a room it was some type of patio addition and they didn't the the stakes that they built into the ground they just put them in the ground no one concrete. of our one of our remodelers one of our remodelers got called out to come and help the lady fix the problem uh -oh. because her power had been shut off because the city said you can't who did they get called by the, the homeowner mm -hmm. that's good yeah and that guy is not obviously not calling her back or anything probably not even licensed probably not isn't that sad and the city's really cracking down on that. I'm so and glad. they are not going to let people keep living in those houses. And they're not done to code. Yep. We need to get Michael Shannon on here. Yeah, we had been trying, remember? Mm hmm. We need to try we, again. Uh, or I'll send myself an email. I'll text him after this, too. So I'm on the news. Again. Really? Mm hmm It was about the, the bars closing because he's in code compliance. Oh. I don't know if that's the same department he was in before. I don't know. I think him. it is. I think it is. We need a whole show devoted to that. Mm hmm I really want to get that show going. Look at them sausages. Oh my gosh. So I need to do barbecue some sausages tonight. He's got a nice beard. That's a thick one. I know you don't like um, dark beers, but just so you know. I do like dark beers. Remember how we them. loved the Oktoberfest at Altstadt? Mm -hmm. They're out with the bottles right now. So if you want some, now's the time to go grab them. I'll buy some for I you. bought two packs. This morning we went to go get our groceries before we get Greta and Scout tonight. Oh, you went and got Greta? No, I haven't got her yet. When do you get her? We get her at like five tonight. And I saw it and I was like, we had already picked up beer. And then I saw that and I said, Jared, come back, put that back. We're getting two of these. <laughs> so two hurricanes in the Gulf. And at one point they were looking like they were gonna collide. Oh really? Yeah, but I- I never heard I, that. No, I, but it look, I heard on the radio that it changed. Wouldn't that be something if they did? Yeah. I wonder if they would make that way worse. It was going to be in Louisiana. But now I just heard that it said it was coming to Texas. So I think that, that it was going to yeah. miss most of we Louisiana. We still have a chance so of getting some flooding from it. Yeah. Said. So that means in Austin. it's not, I don't think it's colliding anymore. Can I have the client? We've been letting them pick the music lately. Yeah. Because they're not, they're not consistent, the people. Welcome to the K and Builders Remodeling and Design Show. Thanks, Dave, keeping up all the great hits there and the music <laughs> interludes. He's doing a great job there. We always appreciate him when he when he's here. Yeah. And uh, before, before we get started into the subject at hand, and I want to mention my friends at Expel. Uh, Expel San Antonio. E, it's spelled X. It starts with an X. X P E L. They did my truck, my wife's SUV, mm -hmm. and they're going to do my Hellcat real soon. And the house? And houses. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And so you can do the film on the homes, on the windows that does security. Brochure. Security, yeah. And of course, many people are using it for heat. I just referred someone to David Calvo. So give. Uh, but the local guy is Eric. Uh huh. And Eric is the one that you want to call at 210 
430-7712 at expel.com. Let's do a plaque testimonial, Morgan. So we got this really <laughs> nice um, comment on one of our Facebook posts about a review, and she responded to it. And she's already given us multiple reviews online, but she said, yes, we have used KM for several homes and projects. Kitchen remodel, extra bedroom, and a full bath added, outdoor stairs to our pool, fencing, and lighting. Just so professional from beginning to end. Agree that the team felt like family from Keith all the way down. Uh, I remember the other comment you wrote where they said they mentioned that same thing about family. Yeah, and from, that's what me to, and she agreed with that's that. That's what comment. she's agreeing to. Uh, uh -huh. cool. Thanks I for thought that was that. really nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's over off of um, real close to Alamo Heights. Yes. In the neighborhood right off of Nacogdoches between Nacogdoches. Really cool houses over there. Mm -hmm. I remember her house was a galley kitchen that she wanted to keep with the architectural style of the home. That's right. It was yeah. really cool. A little bit of an opening, but it, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And you can see that on our website too. So mm -hmm. you can check In it the out. kitchens. Mm -hmm. Other kitchens. So we were talking about, really mm -hmm. about portal framing, how you resist winds on freestanding buildings. And we talked pri primarily patio covers, cabanas. Um, and is the reason that those are more those like... Susceptible? Yeah, because it's not like on a foundation, concrete. That's, well, yeah, because if you look at the wall, there's no walls in most of them. And so the uplift is the greatest problem and then the, and then the swaying. And when they sway, they tend to twist because, because they get pushed in one direction and they're resisting moving. And walls actually strengthen buildings? Yes, tremendously. Walls strengthen buildings. And there's another type of freestanding building. Any type of freestanding building is more vulnerable than a building that's, you know, when it's small than one that's large because it mm -hmm. has more walls, more bracing in it, and so forth. Bigger buildings are much stronger. But uh, one other type of very closely related freestanding building is one that has a big opening cut in it, such as a garage. Mm -hmm. When you cut an opening into a wall and make it weaken, it weakens that, that wall. So there are things that have to be done on all of these structures, such as um, strengthening them up at the base. Like we said earlier, there's an uplift situation with open patios and cabanas and pavilions and gazebos. And that is the uplift problem. They can, the winds can get underneath that roof, that roof and ceiling system and can really want to tear it off. So okay. there's two places it wants to tear it off. If, if uh, it'll tear the whole thing and the post will rip them right up. Even a, um, a patio cover that's leaning onto a house mm -hmm. is not strong where it's out there in the open. It's strong where it's attached to the house. So it can become like a, like a, I guess like a seesaw almost. It can be going up and down in the wind until it rips off if, if it's lifting. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have it attached properly at the bottom and where the post ends, it has to be attached well. And so there's codes on all this on how the rafters are attached to the beams and how many nails and screws you, you have to use in them. And when they're not done properly, they can actually uplift. So on some projects, you have to use clips and straps to keep all these things together. And then, of course, at the bottom, the post you have to make sure that they're attached to the foundation really well. But on a gazebo, there's not really a foundation. I guess it's the deck that's the foundation. And well, there's always got to be a foundation to hold that weight. Oh. So you may not think of it as a foundation, but it's a pier. Or, or if it's on a deck, then it has to be really supported well with, with wood. And that has to be reinforced in that area. And then that is transferring into post and, and that goes into a pier in the ground. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's supposed to be done. Now you're right, there are a lot of them that are not done that way. But that's the ones that are sagging, leaning, and being ripped off in high winds, or pulling apart, or twisting, or starting to lean. You better get out from under them when you see them oh, starting great. to lean. People don't always realize it though. It's doing it, sometimes it's doing it gradually. They've, you know, you, if, you, if you've been out there for many, many times, and then after a storm, you go back out there, you're not going to necessarily look up and say, oh, by the way, is it straight? But it could be leaning on you, you don't even notice it. 
because you you're, should look because you're grabbing you're following you're watching the dog or you're yeah. grabbing your drinks and you're walking out there the next sunny day and this and you know you may not realize it but it's leaning and of course if there were a high wind and it's already leaning like we said earlier it's going to lean further real quick mm -hmm. because it starts to get a lot more weight pushing the wrong direction instead of just bearing straight down so there's another so that's one thing we have to do is mount it really good into the ground with concrete too there's usually concrete involved in that. There is always concrete somewhere involved. Even in a deck situation, you're supposed to have piers. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to make people realize is those piers have to be engineered. The city of San Antonio and most cities will not inspect piers. They will, they will actually get you to have, have an um, engineer sign off on those. Mm -hmm. And that means stamping it, writing a letter, and having a, plan, a set of drawings that has to be approved. So that means it was built the right way. Now that's just for downward weight. So exactly. in other words, the city is gonna inspect the structure, the upper structure, mm -hmm. but they don't wanna inspect the concrete because they don't wanna have to come out there and check it and do repeated checks during while you're pouring and make sure that, so they say, you know what, we're gonna put that on the engineers. If you get an engineer to sign off on it, we'll sign okay. off on it. And so that's how all foundations, including piers and, and house slabs and all that are done now in the city. They're all done with engineers. So the engineers got a lot more work out of that when that, when that <laughs> rule was passed a few years ago. But it is a good thing and I understand why it's done. It's to, it's to protect, mm -hmm. to protect you and the homeowner. So, uh, you know, everybody gets protected by that. Now, when we come back, we're gonna be talking about the other thing that the city has to inspect, and this is to prevent the movement, the shifting of the building, the twisting and the leaning. Mm -hmm. How do you prevent that? And, then, and I'll give you a clue. It isn't by making a really strong pier or a support foundation. That does not solve the issue of it blowing off of it. It solves it from lifting up or, you know, because you can attach it now to, to something really strong. That can solve it if you do the right fasteners, but it does not necessarily solve the issue of leaning and something blowing and starting to um, fall down. So that's called portal framing is what we're gonna talk about next. But before we go to the break, I wanted to mention maximum altitude. I am so thrilled with my truck in another way, not just because I like the truck, but now it's even better. I've got 37 inch tires and a two and a half inch lift in the back, the front, and a one inch lift in the front just to clear them. And I was able to use my factory rims. And advice like that, and any type of setup that you want can be done at Maximum Altitude. Go to MaximumAltitude.com and talk to my friend Joey at 655-0184. He's the one that can tell you, you don't need to go that far, or here's what you can do. And they can also install those things that Morgan loves. It's called uh, train, no, horns. No, no, no. train horns, train horns. <laughs> They can install that and any other accessories. Just go look at their showroom and you'll be impressed with all the things you didn't know existed for your truck or your Jeep. Um, and anyway, so look them up at MaximumAltitude.com. We'll be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show after the break. Somebody asked if we do privacy fences. Only uh, lifetime fences. Lifetime privacy fences. What does that mean? Ones that will are built so well that they'll last a lifetime. Are there other ones? Yeah, most of them don't. <laughs> so what are you trying to say? Well, if they really want a, a really good fence, it's not the same price. Oh, okay. The it's not the same price, and those are the only ones we build. We don't want to build something that later turns like out quick. to be crooked or rotting. Okay. And so you have to use different materials, the higher quality of materials, and a different process in installing even the foundation of the fence, the, the posts and so forth. It's steel, it's got steel involved, uh, galvanized steel and so forth. So if you're interested in that, you give us a call. Another question is, what has been the most challenging remodeling project you have encountered? Hmm. 
It was probably the ones when I was the least experienced, but it had to do with people, uh, with homeowners getting involved and having to modify their work <laughs> and trying to make it work. But as far as what most people would be considered like a mammoth project, uh, the most challenging is when you're trying to tear off a roof on somebody's house and build a second floor and, and then deal with weather, which inevitably will come. Weather is the worst. Because there's always a rain in the period of time that you're going to be opening up a roof and putting another structure above it. Mm -hmm. There's two types of tearing off roofs we've done. One is to put one roof off and then put another one on. Like maybe a flat roof to a sloped roof. Mm -hmm. And then the other one that we that we deal with, which is even harder, is take the roof off, build a second floor, and then eventually get that next roof on it, which takes even longer. So in that latter situation, you're almost always going to get rain. Yeah. And you have to deal with it. It's really, really challenging to keep that out of the first floor structure when you weren't planning on taking it out. I guess that was the good thing about having that, what was it, 10-year drought? We didn't have a 10 year drought. Well, I mean, it was, we had very long stretches in the summers without getting rain. Hey, you could do roofs any year. Yeah, but you never knew when that one rain was going to happen. Yeah, that's true. It happened. It just didn't happen very often. What about the, like, where you have to save the ex existing structure, like with, like, the Rokovich garage? That's complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree that that's one of the more challenging remodeling. Mm -hmm. Also, is whenever you have to keep a building intact and then tear its foundation out. From you have to keep a building. That's we did really one, weak. We did, we did a building where we took the whole foundation out from under it. Yeah. And then replaced it. That's mm -hmm. pretty challenging, too. But it doesn't have the weather issues yeah, that's to deal good. with. Because it can get wet. Yeah. I mean, that building itself is just so fragile. I mean, if you think about it, like some of the weather we've had recently would be like, let's go ahead and do this roof off. And then what do we get? Yeah. Two, two hurricanes coming into the Gulf. And you yeah. can't finish a, a big project like that quick enough. Yeah. There's just no way. It's got walls and framing and decks and patios on it. And then a, and then a big roof system. Yep. You can't do it. So you have big, big tarps, and you have to do an intermediate close off of the roof. No work's going to be done while this thing passes, and then we'll open it up again to the next window we have. Look at that house. What happened to it? The hurricane. Mm. You have some steel in there, you can see, right? Man, look at the houses that were destroyed and some that were standing right next to it. Next one is the maids. You can do it. No, you do them. You do them. Oh, you're going to do... The what? That's right. right. Guess what I'm going to be doing next week? What? I'm going to be putting a new floor in. You got it? Coming in Monday. Wow. I thought you weren't going to get it after all. I decided to do it. Good. So you're going to oversee the flooring being put in? No, I'm going to do it. You're going to help them? No, we're going to do it. Oh my goodness. Ooh, makes me glad not to live there. <laughs> Everybody's going to bury their keep. <laughs> that is not going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's easy. The tear out of the... Um, You're not tearing out your tile yourself. Part of it. Part oh. of it. You guys' backs are going to hurt the, so much. And then the wood floor is going to down, too. You're going to tear that out? I love it. I didn't like that. Either. Like it anyway. Funky. 
Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith along with Morgan. Hello everybody. And we're glad to be with you and we are taking your calls live at 737-1200. If you would like to give us a call, we'd be glad to talk to you about your remodeling project, your ideas, your questions. We want to prevent you from making a mistake. It's one of the main reasons we started this show is to help people realize that it, it needs to be done carefully and correctly. There's just projects everywhere that are done wrong. And just like having somebody work in your house for anything, you want it done right. Mm -hmm. I think of um, how we have our house cleaned and how you have your house cleaned. The handyman and pa. And yeah, our parents done by the maids. And they use a hospital grade disinfectant that's proven to kill viruses like the flu and COVID-19. So even if you've got that virus floating around, they're gonna kill it for you. <laughs> And all their tools and equipment are sanitized between houses, just like you do on a chainsaw when you're cutting your neighbor's trees. You, you sanitize it so it won't spread oak quilt. They're not spreading anything from the other clients. Yeah. If there was anything, because they killed it. Look them up at maids.com slash 211. Or call them at 822-2526. That's 822-2526 for the maids.com slash 211. And so, what is trending, Morgan? Well, I've been seeing it a lot in our clients and online. A lot of people are installing double kitchen islands. Not double kitchen sinks. No, double, double kitchen, kitchen islands. islands. Yeah. And the reason for this is because an island is such a good workspace, but it's also a great entertaining space. So when you have two, one can be your workspace, and the other can be your entertaining space and you don't have to worry about the two colliding and getting in your way, you know, inevitably you're still prepping things when the kids are ready to sit down for dinner and you don't want them to be touching everything or when you have people over, you want to have that separate space and it kind of keeps people in the party area and out of the kitchen area. But still feeling part of the kitchen. Yes, because everybody always ends up in the kitchen. <laughs> right. And it's nice for the, the cooks, cook or cooks to whoever's preparing, and usually in a big holiday or mm -hmm. a big uh, gathering. gathering, people are, multiple people in the kitchen. Yeah. And so they need their workspace, which is why you'd use one island, and then the other one is, and it's really nice when you have that one island in the center of the kitchen, mm -hmm. so that you can use all four sides, and yes. then the other one is like you said, it's outer boundary kind of. Yes. Here's the perimeter of the kitchen, and you can typically use one side, or, or one side and one edge of that island as well. Seating. Yeah, and then you can use the outside edges for seating. Like oh you yeah. Said. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that gives a lot of working space for the kitchen, and really you can't have too much of that. Mm -mm. They're always needing more. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, a lot of our kitchen's designs these days do not have a lot of wall cabinets. So that also gives you more room for storage underneath mm -hmm. when you have two islands. And, uh, and then you don't miss that, hey, I don't have any wall storage. Well, you don't really need it. And you get that open concept that just, just so, so beautiful. So beautiful, yeah. And it really looks great. It really looks awesome. All right, so let's get into our subject here about open structures, outdoor structures that are open, whether it's a garage that has, I mean, a freestanding building that has a big hole in it for double garage doors, mm -hmm. or whether it's a cabana, a patio cover, a pavilion, a, uh, what other else do we want to call them? Oh, gazebo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gazebo. Mm -hmm. Any of those, no matter the structure, no matter the, the uh, shape, they are weakened structures until they have something done. We talked about how we want to fight a fight uplift, mm -hmm. how we connect it to the concrete, how we connect it to each piece that goes up, and how the roof is connected to that upper structure is all important so that the wind can't get under it and lift it up and literally start tearing it apart. And that can happen more Scary. than you think. It's happened in San Antonio a lot. And we don't care about other places in this show as much <laughs> because we're talking to people primarily that are in this area, but it can happen in other places also. And it happens in other places even more, closer to the coast and uh, in high wind areas where there are tornadoes. But right here in San Antonio, which is one of the safer places mm -hmm. when it comes to wind, is uh, it still happens. 
and people don't realize it can happen, but it can. And I want to talk about that leaning effect now. When the winds start to push, which we all know the winds push, they don't only lift things up, which they do a lot, like shingles and buildings and so forth, but they push, they lean things, because that's what happens with a tree. You see, go out when the winds are strong, your tree is lean. Now that same effect is being pushed on those out, out buildings. Those freestanding buildings have that same tremendous amount of push. I mean, it's more than, than people can push it. And I mean, it's just thousands and thousands of pounds of pushing going on that's hitting your roof and your, or your structures. If you have wall on one side and you're open on the other, it's even more push going if it's hitting that side. So four, four walls will resist pushing really well, but one wall will make it push better. <laughs> It'll push better, you know, and that's what you, and sometimes we have that. We have a three-sided structure, mm -hmm. and if the winds come at the wrong direction, it's pushing even more. So how do you deal with that? Well, it doesn't mean you can't design your building that way. It's okay to, to have that structure with one wall, no walls, three walls, two walls, but there are things that are done to compensate. And what we call that is portal framing. It is a very specific type of structural attachment and resistance to moving. Some of these brackets go up three feet up in the air from the concrete and they bolt into the concrete or they are actually poured into the concrete. And these huge straps prevent, and they're wide, they're about two inches wide, and they prevent lateral movement. We have so, a video about that, I think. We do, yeah. The Rokovich. Yeah, on the Rokovich garage, mm -hmm. you can go see those straps and, and how we attach them mm -hmm. and how they were poured in place. You can also bolt them in place, but it's uh, you have to use a really big bolt. I mean, it's like three quarters of an inch thick, and it goes down in several places. You have to do that more than once but so this is called portal framing and when it's not done right not only will it not prevent the building from leaning and eventually falling down it won't pass inspection either so that's where the city comes in now that is something that they do inspect and that is something they are looking out for a lot of people who have built do not do this right because maybe they haven't done a garage or or a, one of these buildings in the city for quite a while or maybe never they may have not have even built one you know not everybody who builds has done everything repeated times or even once so a lot of people who get into this business did not grow up doing it they said you know what i think i'd like to get into the to the building business or the remodeling business nothing wrong with that but they but they just are very limited in their experience so they build these buildings and everything looks great I mean, it looks like it's going to hold up. It hold you know, you could, like you could hit a truck with it, but they don't know, and neither does the homeowner. Yeah. They don't know that when the winds hit, it won't resist it. That big opening garage, opening two-door garage door or one-car garage door that you just put in that building has significantly weakened that structure. Not only can you not uh, brace it well enough by using plywood on the sides, the headers above have to go all the way to the end, so that's a structural thing that you can't just fix. These, these uh, brackets you could bolt in, but you've got to take the structure apart to do that. And so people don't realize how dangerous it can be to build it wrong. And then, you know, if it's not getting an inspection, then you're never going to know until it's too late when your building starts leaning. And so portal framing and uplift, uh, the portal framing resisting the, the leaning and the uplift attachments into the all the way from the slab to the roof are to resist the uplift that can happen with these high winds. And of course, we're in a season where we're getting more and more high winds with the hurricane season coming. That's what made me think about it. And we're building structures right now that have these incorporated in it. And so be aware of it. And um, I do want to mention my friends at Elite Lighting Designs. Sean George is his name? I believe so. Sean George, yeah, that's <laughs> Sean, the guy that we met. He's the owner of it. What a great guy has a very successful long-term company like we do in San Antonio. And you should look them up at Elite Lighting Designs and look it up on our website because we have a video of my house being wonderfully lit. It's great for safety, great for aesthetic value, and great for resale, by the way. Uh, look them up at EliteLightingDesigns.com or call them at 210 
573-0594. And we'll be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. A friendly reminder from GiveMeTheVin.com. The market is up. Okay, they have another question now. Same one? Uh-huh. I he like said, these questions. What has been your favorite remodeling job for 2020? Let's see. What do you... Favorite remodeling project for 2020? Probably one that we just finished or one that we are about to finish. I love the historic remodel that we're finishing up now. Mm -hmm. What about the garage? The freestanding garage? Ellie. Yeah, I love those. Thinking of um, probably the, the very large two-story room addition out in Garden Ridge is my favorite type of project. It hits hits all the elements. Oh yeah. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very large two-story room addition in Garden Ridge that we did. Yeah. So we built out one floor and another. We affected some of the rooms inside as well. Yeah. Uh, and that's a very nice one. Yeah. Master suite, multiple bathrooms, uh, patio attachment, mm -hmm. um, faux shutters. Well, they're real. They look like real shutters anyway. They're made out of wood. They're decorative. And then arches, stucco, to match and complement the home. It's always fun because then you see that this room looks exactly like the rest of the house. It's always fun when you see that at the end. Really nice patio door systems. And one of my favorite for the money would have to be the one where we did the, we took the back windows out and put a whole sliding door system in it. We just finished that one and we took out a little wall that you saw remember we took out the little wall that made it easy to get around to the doors you were there Floyd oh yeah yeah wasn't that a cool one yeah and then we took a center post out of the out of the, the, the patio. patio so that and put another beam under it mm -hmm. and I really like walking up to a project like that saying this is how this would look if we did have you thought of doing this and this and this and then them saying that sounds good let's do it and then we get to do it. And then it looks just like we thought it would look like. Mm -hmm. That one, to me, for the had money. so much life-changing aspects of oh, it. Oh, for the money, it was one. it's one of the bigger bang for the buck. I always love doing it. It changed those. their life, really, though. The way that they, they operate inside yeah. their rooms. Yeah. It changed three or four rooms. The patio, the dining room, the kitchen, and the living room. Yep. All with a very small budget project. Yeah. That one that's probably the most fun I get from for the money on that one. Yeah. For size wise, that's the most fun project. That one's really cool. I like those because you don't realize, um, but those projects increase your home value so tremendously. Like I need to do a project like that at our house. Yeah, you have that whole wall. <laughs> we'll be back. Yeah. What? Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. We're in our last segment, and you can call us still at 737-1200. If you'd like to ask a question, we've been getting questions on Instagram and Facebook, and we appreciate those and enjoy answering them. Yeah, so if you're not watching us there, you're missing out. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're continuing the program even, even while the commercial breaks go on. Mm -hmm. So I want to mention, before we forget, before the end of the road here, my beautiful yard was courtesy of bio green and i'm doing little things to it all the time now because it's so fun to work in the yard biogreensa.com they do a really nice angle program which we're going to continue this next year um they are awesome yeah you know, start it in the fall start it now before you're you're because that's when you want to get get these root systems with nutrients in them so that they store this for the inner they have stored up energy literally in their root systems of your of your yard 
so that when the spring comes, you're maximizing your growing season and being able to transform your yard to the maximum effect by what you did in the fall. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna call um, Joe Caccino at BioGreen, do it now, 421-9522, because we'll be in the fall before you know it. 421-9522, or just look them up at biogreensa.com. And so we were talking about freestanding structures and they definitely are one of the ones that most that so many companies do wrong and so many homeowners try to do themselves and they do it wrong and I just went out to one last week and it had braces on it little braces you know we call those corbels and the man asked me he's a really cool guy he said well if you take those off is that gonna is that gonna make a difference or are they just decorative? I said, no, they actually make a difference. Oh, really? Uh -huh, they really do. So sometimes you'll see those braces and mm -hmm. you'll think, well, I just want to take them off. Uh, be real careful about that. It's part of the structure. Now, I'm not saying that braces are the end all to keeping buildings from swaying or moving or leaning, but they can Helps. help. But they can help, yeah. And in some designs are absolutely required. Mm. Now, you know, wood, no matter how you attach it, has a bending effect. Steel, not so much. Steel, steel doesn't doesn't bend as much, nearly as much as, as wood does. Especially the kind that you use for, for building structures. So that's why when we do those one car, the two car to one door garages, mm -hmm. we put a steel plate. Sometimes we have to because of the room that we have. We don't have enough room to put a bigger beam. Uh -huh. But wherever we can, we put a bigger beam. Mm -hmm. And the interesting you mentioned steel plates. There are also, if you look, if you have a garage and you have a brick or stone or above it, you're gonna see a steel plate there on the outside. It's usually painted and the stone is sitting on it. Well, we just did a project in a beautiful million dollar home that was pulling apart. And when we took it apart and looked at it, the bolts in there were oh so small it was pulling down off and the stone was, was pulling away from the upper structure. And so we Scary. tore all the stone down, put the new bolts in, put the stone back up all in one day. And so it went really, really smooth. And of course, we figured out immediately, we, well, what we thought was it wasn't bolted right. And sure enough, we were right. We have to use big lag bolts in there to, to those headers. And is that just an old code that they have, how did they no, get away with that? No, that was that was just never done right. And inspectors don't always catch it in time. That's scary. Yeah, they usually don't inspect every specific aspect of it, but the builder is supposed to have those processes. Mm -hmm. I don't know who the builder was, but it was, you know, it's a home that's 15, 20 years old. Yeah. And it was an expensive home, even when it was built, but just little details like that, you know, it's unfortunate that, that the homeowner has to go and spend money to get his house done right. Mm -hmm. It's really, really unfortunate, but that's that's little things you have to look at. It's all about the details in remodeling. And that's why you have to hire someone who knows all of those details. I'll give you another detail that we're doing on a project. The big one that I said was one of my favorite ones for mm -hmm. 2020 is the way that we, we prepare for stucco. So many projects that we get into, the stucco was not done correctly and it's getting moisture into the walls and you may think I'm painting them or I'm sealing them up. That doesn't solve the condensation issue that happens so often because throughout the year. Because porous. Well, yeah, and it's it can't get out. The, oh. the, the moisture can't get out. And if you seal it up, it can't get out even quicker. Yeah, you're not going to get additional moisture in there, but there's some moisture created just from cold and heat being on different sides of walls, mm -hmm. just like on a roof. And that's why there's felt paper under a roof. You know, you, otherwise it would rot out. Felt paper, and now we use synthetics because the felt paper can get moisture in it eventually. Mm -hmm. So we use a synthetic underlayment. And um, now we're, you know, what? so, so we're, we're really putting several layers that prevent moisture from getting back into the wall on this stucco. So again, a company that is all about details nope. tends to do a right job, not just on the things that you're looking at as a homeowner, or that you got told about or that you learned about even on this show but all the other things that you don't know like the size of the bolts and by the way they were not even galvanized they were 
they were they were all rusted, mm. and we got pictures of it. Dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous, and you know, one day that could fall on your car. Or you're walking mm. under there. Fortunately, the homeowner saw it before it fell. Wow. And it was attached to a little pergola over in beautiful, beautiful design, but just not built right at all. So these are the things we look at, and if you need help with any of those, you give us a call at 680-5626. Easy way to remember that number is 680-KMCO. And our website is kmbuilders.com, and that's where we have designed the experience so you can experience the design. And we're available in other places, too. Yes, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at KM Builders and sign up for our newsletter on our website so you can see all of our latest projects and KM details. And you will get a lot of great, fun information. It's a lot of fun to see all these projects and all the tips we have for you. Thank you for listening to the show, the KM Builders Remodel Design Show. Remember, we've designed the experience so you can experience the design. Thank you all and have a great weekend.